Hey everyone, it's Lucid. Welcome back to another game with Scalaria and the Crucible. It is turn 70. Uh, and if you recall, we've kind of... We're technically ahead in terms of property. But we've been losing so many fights to Agartha and Abyssia. And Abyssia raided us a ton. So it's... We're beginning to feel a little overwhelmed here. Uh... And it's not super clear if we're going to hold, but we'll see. And these disease demons are annoying. Not because I can't replace who they kill, but it disrupts a lot of my troop movement. Uh, earth attack. It's kind of funny, we killed the earth elemental. Probably just tortoise skeletons in. And the thing is, the they're pretty good when they're size... Uh, 5 or whatever, but... When they get reduced a little bit, they're not nearly as tough. Uh, okay, more disease demons. Uh, we cast Lichcraft. I didn't really cover that, but we've got a Lich now, which is going to be nice. They're kind of going to be... They're cheaper than our Wraith Lords, and they have higher magic paths, which is more what we want for leading our undead troops around. Wraith Lords are better if you want them to kind of fight themselves. Um, we cast... Whoops. We cast Mind Hunt. We did not kill him. As we never do. Uh, we did kill Lord Gravespell, so I think... I think that was one of their Bane Lords. So that will discourage them, hopefully, from attacking us. Uh, we got a Golem of our own, and this Golem we have geared up. We're going to come back to him in a minute. Oh, that was Gravespittle. Uh, we get attacked by some more Horrors. And mostly we are losing, but here, if they if we have enough PD, we kill the Horrors pretty easily, but we kind of need a lot. We need about at least 100 uh, undead patrolling, which is not too hard to do, but anyway. Uh, blood economy going okay. Uh, you know, we got a blood... or we got a vampire again last turn, so... It's not bad. Basically, we're getting a vampire every four turns right now. Uh, and we're going to start using them. It's... we're not... Scaling up is not so important anymore. Okay, so a little raid. Okay, another little raid. Okay, ooh, hello. Killed some Bane Lords. Okay, this does not look like an army that would kill two Bane Lords, but... I uh, guess what we have? We have a little Sabbath Master Bane Lord killing best. Alright, there goes life for life. First dude deleted. Time for the next dude. Next dude deleted. And uh, that, guys, is how you deal with Bane Lord thugs. That was... Probably... Let's count the gems. They're 18 gems a piece or something like that for the chassis. And then for the items, let's see, it's 10, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45, 50, 50 plus 18, it's about 65 gems. So each one of these is, you know, it's a bunch of different gems and you can get a discount with a hammer. But it's, you know, comparable to the cost of a global. And yeah, we just killed two of them. Like that for five blood slaves. Not a bad way to get rid of 120 gems. Um, we attack Agartha and win. We attack a more of Abyssia's Bane Lords. Uh, in this case, though, they're underwater. And there's three. That's not good. And we do have water elementals, and water elementals tend to kill everything underwater. Um, unfortunately, our troops are way behind them. I was kind of expecting the water elementals to sit there while my troops tanked. Maybe I should have put them farther forward. And the soul slays, of course, aren't working, nor are the paralyzed. What's their MR? It's only 19. See, when I have 19 MR, it's like every single thing that can hit me kills me. Unholy command. Alright, get ready to die, buddy. Do you have twice born? Nope. You're dead. Okay, I guess in a different world we kill uh, one of them, because I think I saw one of them die in the report, yeah. I think the big problem was my troops were too far back, 
If they were farther forward, they would have run into the Bane Lords and tanked them a little bit while my Water Elementals killed them. So that is unfortunate. What that probably also means is we're going to lose a fort down there, because I think it was cracked because we cast at the same time they attacked us. Uh, Agartha is attacking us. That's going to be just a massacre. Ooh, hello. So, let's see where this is. Okay, so Agartha is moving in towards our throne. And this is a big old scary army. We will get to see what his script is, though. So he's cast Mass Flight. A bunch of Strength of Giants. Uh, earthquakes are coming out. Relief. I think I did... Did I do Rigor Mortis or did he? Uh, it appears he did, which is a bit odd. Mists of Deception, which means Phantasmal Warriors are going to run on the battlefield. Not a spell you see very often. Uh, so anyway, we have an idea what he's going to do. Largely Mass Flight. Um, and this guy, if he kills my throne, I think that's going to be the game. So we are going to have to figure out how we're going to defend it. Here you can see uh, he successfully raids us, we successfully raid him, and again, uh, he attacks us, he attacks us. So okay, I think we're losing ground. We're going to have to look at the army grip, but I'm pretty sure I've lost a fair amount of ground the past couple turns. Okay, we killed the temple, which is nice. Um, he attacks us and wins. I think we caused him to rout. How does that work? Okay, he successfully killed us, but his commander died. Uh, we have a new player, a Tartarian. So he's an Earth Death Dude, he's got a Spirit Helm, a Charcoal Shield, an Axe of Sharpness. Axe of Sharpness is a budget way to deal with thugs. And then Shock and MR. And then this guy's gonna probably buff him up with Quickness and stuff. Yeah. And... Now, if I'm worried about Tartarians, I need my guys on Advance and Cast Spells, because I can control Dead them. And with whatever... Yeah, with 22 MR, I will eventually get through that. But the problem is I'm just... Spamming skeletons from the back. And no amount of skeletons is going to bring this guy down. So, just fast forward it here. This is basically how it's going to go. He's fine. Yeah, he's fine. So, uh, yeah, he kills everything. I forget where that was. Somewhere down here. Okay, yeah. So he kills a ton of dudes, uh, which is a bit annoying. I think this was a fort I was going to take of his. Uh, this appears to be very nice. We have a Marble Oracle, who happens to be sacred, and I know exactly what I like doing with sacred dudes. Okay, and it is a Trample kind, so he put Boots of Trample, or no, he put uh, Stymphalian... Uh, wings on him and boots of quickness. So it's a high speed trample dude. And it is going for my line, which was pretty smart, but uh, it got converted, so I get all that gear now. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, that was here. So we got a ton of gear. Very nice. Uh, and then. Uh, the Bane Lord is kind of wrecking havoc on us. Another Marble Oracle comes in. This time we were not so fortunate. He killed a bunch of stuff on my back line. And... Uh, we take one of Agartha's provinces. We lost a, t a fair amount of guys, though. It's okay. Uh, and then here we took another one of uh, Agartha's provinces. This is Marignan. So we have knocked him off of... Or we are on top of Marignan's cap. And so in some ways we're having, I think this is the middle pocket of the map, and we're having a lot of success rating, that we will validate that in a hot minute. 
Um, so, okay, these last battles have been much more in our favor, uh, which is good. We got 72 Astral Pearls, so a ton of Astral Pearls coming in, and we have to figure out what we're going to do with that. Now, uh, one thing I'm realizing is I've got a ton of dudes here in my in my capital, so I'm going to get some of them out. I had already moved my Astral Lord out last turn, and that's because uh, with RK Nexus, especially on a kind of weak dude, now I do have Twiceborn and Ritual of Returning and other stuff on him, but uh, getting him out of my capital is another way to ensure that they don't somehow target my capital with some spell and take him out. So we've got him here. He uh, he can get up three more paths, so that's up to Astral 8, but he, that's not high enough to quite do... Um, to, to, to cast Wish yet, and that is something I do want to do. Um, I'm not sure what... What is my plan to actually break into that? I'm probably just going to have to empower him, actually. Um, but we actually have a problem here, and the problem is there's a 600-person army on top of this, so... Do we have a battle here with Abyssia? Oh, how did we not watch that? This is like the big battle of the turn, sorry. Okay, Firestorm comes down, I, but I got Army of Gold up, I think, in time. Uh, but it is not going to be enough. Or will it? Or will it? Oh, we just need a little bit more undead. Okay, let's look at the battle report for this one. I'm not sure if we watched that. So, uh, I lost 13 Thaumaturgs, which is kind of a problem. My Vampire Lords died, which is kind of a problem. We didn't kill many of his mages, but we killed a ton of his troops. So he's not going to be breaking this fort down anytime soon now. So, uh, that is the silver lining on top of lo losing that army. Uh, coming down here... Uh, we are desperately preaching to get Purgatory out. I mean, it's not in yet, but it's very, very close. And he's uh, blood sacrificing here in all his temples to push uh, Dominion into me. Um, any other important battles? I think I was patrolling here. It appears that Bane Lord killed me. But I got rid of a lot of his Bane Lord thugs. You can see I've cleared up a bunch of this area where he had a bunch of thugs running around. Uh, and we have dealt with them in one way or another. Um, and so now it's just this. I believe... Uh, this guy's researching. I believe I negotiate for Abyssia to jump off of these lands. Uh, because Agartha is going to win, presumably, turn after next if he takes this. Uh, and for him to go ahead and take this. So he can... Or he, I can't remember. I think I'm going to give this to him. If I don't do it this turn, I'm going to do it next. And he's going to have the option to go take that. Uh, and I'm going to give him... Well, he took this fort too. There's nothing inside. His Bane Lord just killed it. But uh, he gets to keep this. I get to keep this. And so he's... Every time Abyssia attacks, he gets a little more land, and I kind of part with it. Um, but you can see, I'm, I think I'm getting more from Agartha. Let's take a look at the province graph. So we did better. Uh, we're definitely ahead net where we started, because we started down here. But it's costing us a ton of mages, uh, which is kind of a problem. So, uh, the big thing that we're going to spend, I think, the rest of this episode talking about is what the hell are we going to do with this Agarthan army? And uh, what we are going to do, and you can see, you might have a hint, whereas you can see for the first time I'm actually like numbering off all my guys, is we are going to have the biggest battle that we have had all game. We are going to do everything we can do to keep from losing, and this represents an existential threat. And this, let's take a look real quick again at this battle. So, here's who we're fighting. Three alchemists, a crystal sorceress, fairy queen, flame spirits, golem crafters, jade sorceresses, king of flames, a lich, a queen of thunder, 
uh, Oracle of the Ancients, we've got a ton of stuff. Some fire elementals and then a huge amount of high quality units. Like magma children are really good when buffed. Fire elementals. So a ton of high quality units. A Tartarian, I think this is the only one. Yeah. Really tough stuff. Um, now how are we going to do it? Because this is twice as hard as any of the other Agarthan armies and we have failed every time we've gone to attack them. He has one turn cracked this. Now, let's talk about what I expect. I don't expect he's going to storm this, because he's going to win, I think, if he takes this. So what I expect he's going to do is just move everybody over here. Has he claimed any thrones? I don't think he's claimed any more, but he probably has people positioned to, because he's still at five. But I know he at least has six, and I think he has seven. And he will probably claim all of them and win if he gets this. So, we're doing everything. If people were researching, I don't really care. Uh, we're basically pulling everybody. Now, uh, so I have them numbered off, because I really needed... Uh, we have to have a ton of slaves. Uh, we need a lot. And if you see as we scroll down, we've got a ton. We've got... 41, 45, okay, I think that's it. We've got 45. Now, the way communions work, if you didn't know, is every power of two, you get another astral path, or I mean another magic path to your communion master, so basically it's 2, 4, uh, 8, 16, 32. So 45 puts us squarely above 32. Um, and then if you do the math again, 2 gives you 1, 4 gives you 2. 8 gives you 3, 16 gives you 4, and 32 gives you 5. So we're getting five bonus, uh, five bonus magic paths. Now you may ask yourself, what do we need all of those bonus paths for? What on earth could we possibly do with so many communion slaves? Well, my pet one, uh, you see all these astral gems here. We are going to be casting Arcane Domination. Now, we could do... Uh, master and Slave. And Master and Slave technically would be better, but Arcane Domination requires fewer pearls and less... I'll just click on it real quick. Uh, requires fewer pearls so and fewer magic paths. So we only have to get up to seven. And uh, I don't have Master and Slave yet, which is the other important part. But I'll have Master and Slave soon, where I can do it, and that would potentially get everybody, but almost everything in his army is magic. There's a few things that aren't. Um, so that is going to be very, very, very good. Um, the thing is, uh, if you run the odds, if we looked at kind of the stuff in his army, and I, I when I did all this and played the turn, I actually ran the numbers, and I remember kind of what the outcomes were. I don't really remember... You know, by the time we got there, what it was like. Okay, so I think we've got most of these guys here. So they're at 19 MR. I think that's pretty pretty much what they all are. Let's take a look at some of these. 17, so they're like 17 to 19 MR. Some of them are a little lower. Are these guys magic too? Okay. So... Uh, the thing is, when you're at 19 MR and you're doing the arcane, uh, whoops, arcane domination is going to be uh, hard to, or easy to negate, or hard to to work. So basically, it's going to be like a, the normal MR check, which is 12, I think. Again, I can be wrong on all these things, but. Um, it's going to be like that, but in addition, they're going to get... It's going to be five hard, or four harder for us. So it's going to be effectively like MR verse 8, uh, which is not very good. I think when you run it versus like 17 or whatever, some kind of average if their MR was, it was like 5% per cast, which is not a lot. But when you cast it, and let's count now, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you cast it ten times, it's probably going to work. So we're not only doing that, we're doing a bunch of things. Uh, we're doing Mass Regeneration, Foul Vapors, Rain, Relief, all good stuff for me. 
Uh, Sabbath Master, Reinvigoration, Rush of Strength. Uh, I think Will of Fates is somewhere up here. We've also got Reinvigoration coming down, which is going to be really nice on this communion. Um, we've got Army of Gold, which is going to be quite nice. Temper Flesh, and a Turn 1 Army of Gold, which will be nice. Uh, we've got Will of Fates coming out rather early, which is going to be pretty good at protecting a lot of my Communion Masters and stuff from things like Gifts of Heaven or any of the other Battlefield wipes. Um, and I think that's mostly it. Um, we have some other people that are going to be putting miscellaneous buffs onto our Communion Slaves, like Astral Shield, Invulnerability, Skeletal Body. We've got Divine Blessing coming out, Personal Luck, Twist Fate. Twist Fate's always nice to have. We've got Turn 1 Divine Blessing 2. This guy's not even really part of the Communion. Um, I th think I should have Light of the Northern Star and Power of the Spheres. I don't know where they are. Let's see if we can find it super quick. Okay, here's Light of the Northern Star, and I'm sure I have... I probably have Life After Death somewhere, too, though I could be wrong. It's hard to remember to script everything, but it is important. Uh, Vortex of Unlife is going to be nice, too. Uh, Master Generation Apostasy. I do not see Life After Death, which is pretty important in this whole shebang. Um... Okay, Power of the Spheres, okay. So let's do the math real quick. These take Astral 7, we start at Astral 1. To get to 7, we get 5 from the Communion, so that gets us up to 6, but we still need one more, so Power of the Spheres. And, uh, this would technically be enough to do Master and Slave, which would require 8, I believe. Because with Light of the Northern Star, we should definitely make it. So anyway, we have a ton of Power of the Spheres. I don't know why it's hard for me to find. Uh, the thing we do not have that I can find is life after death, and this would definitely be a good battle to cast life after death. <sighs> anyway, so uh, that is it. Hopefully when this drops, we'll get half of his army. And then the other half will rout soon thereafter. Uh, there's some notable things I do not see myself having, uh, I, and I could be wrong. I don't see any air mages here that are going to be doing... Uh, mass Flight or Fog Warriors, which would be quite important. So that is notably missing. I'm not doing Wailing Winds, which would also be quite nice. Though not so good versus Agartha. Um, we are attack- I'm assuming he's not breaking here. So everybody here is going to break the siege and then retreat. And then a few of these guys are not going to retreat. They're just going to kind of attack. Uh, I probably should have scripted more to attack, attack in case he had a medium-sized defense force here, because, yeah. The other option is he comes up here and tries to knock me off this fort, but I don't think he's going to. He's either going to storm this or he's going to attack here, I think. Uh, so anyway, we're going to roll the dice here and storm this fort. Um, yeah, we're breaking the siege here to either get my guys out or to hopefully knock off whoever's defending. There is a Marble Oracle here. I don't think we're doing it. We're not even really worrying about catching him. And... And I'm quite sure, you can see we don't have any fights aimed for Abyss yet. I'm quite sure at this point in time we have negotiated uh, that he will basically get off me and leave me alone. Though he may get some of these lands, I'm not sure which ones, but I definitely ne I negotiated I think he probably gets the throne, but I'm not sure. I don't think I give him this one, obviously. Uh, he did pin us in with the scout here, which is a little embarrassing. Um, but you can see over on this front, the war is actually going pretty well. We've got a lot of things with the Scalaria flag over it. Um, we're going to be getting this fort, which is really important. Over here, you can see we have uh, this fort popped again. It's almost definite that he is going to move this way uh, to knock me off. So we're going to move back down here and check this fort. Uh, we took this one from him last turn, uh, and this is where we also got the Marble Oracle. 
So I think we're going to move here. When I'm here, he's probably not going to defend, so I'll have the choice to ping one of two thrones, which will again spread his armies out more. Uh, we have this throne. Um, checked pretty hard. We've got a pretty solid army in here, so we can do things like mass flight and fog warriors, if all goes according to plan. So we will be storming this. I don't see an, a big army which can come respond. He could send in these statues, but I don't think that's enough. Um, this army, again, is isolated from everybody else, so I think we can storm this fort and take it. Though, again, we don't know what's inside. This would be really nice to get some more astral income. So you can kind of see how the, this is playing out. Uh, I don't have armies which can easily beat his biggest armies, even if I were to throw huge armies together, like four or 5,000 skeletons. Um, he can then focus more on battlefield wipe stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be able to easily win against his big army. The exception here is I'm spending 100 gem uh, pearls on uh, arcane uh, domination, which, you know, you got to be careful about that going off on a gem, uh, on a gem burner attack. But uh, anyway... Uh, hopefully it doesn't, <laughs> but uh, be because of that, our our plan is kind of working. We've got more medium-sized armies than he does, and if we continue moving around and dodging his, he wants to get our armies off the field, but if we don't let him do that, then we're going to continue to have more medium-sized armies, and every once in a while, we find a fort to, to, to break. So that's what we're going to continue doing. Now, uh, by moving down here, if for whatever reason he doesn't come knock me off this fort, he goes up this way or something like that, well, I'm going to have this fort for free next turn. Um, we also have a big army over here, which we have taken this with. This is what was over here. Um, we are going to move up and take this. This, unless he moves his capital army over this way, uh, he will not be able to defend this fort the turn after. So that would give us another fort over in this area. Um, he has a big army here on top of us, and I think we watched part of this battle. Yeah. So this we need to defeat also. Now, uh, here... What, why did I give him gems and hold and retreat? This looks like I was abandoning the fort, but I, I don't know why I'm doing that exactly. Uh, I I'm not totally sure what I'm doing over here on this front. Uh, but he hasn't cracked the fort. I've got a f he'll crack it next turn. But anyway, that gives me another turn to respond. So I'll have more mages recruited and stuff. Uh, and then we'll respond. Uh, I probably should be raiding across this way. I guess I don't have anybody who can cross the water. Um, but anyway, I, th I think that's about it. Let me see. Okay, I don't have any outgoing messages. And... I think that's it. So uh, anyway, this is kind of how it's playing out. Uh, I, I'm not doing, you know, there's definitely some things I'm not doing optimally, and I it's hard even with this much stuff for me to walk through and show you all the stuff we're doing every turn. Um, but I think we're doing enough diverse different types of raiding threats that it's slowly kind of winning us back the the province graph war. Uh, I mean, here it had been kind of crashing down and we've kind of stabilized. And I think once a lot of this is actually Abyssia on my lands, but I think he's going to get off. So it should hop back up next turn. Uh, but we'll see. Thank you for watching. See you next time.